Hey, welcome to the Lexorcists. Once again, joining me is Steve. Hello. My name is Jeff. We are joining, uh, you, you are joining us, rather, on our nostalgic journey through the late 90s, early 2000s, kind of cult, uh, lesser known sci-fi series named Lex. We are in the middle of season two. This is a show that was on Sci-Fi Channel. It was on some sort of Canadian channel. It's a Canadian German production, but it found an audience like as time went on and I, I came to it very late. We're in the middle of it now. We are in the middle of season two. We're watching season two, episode 11 uh, called Nook and season two, episode 12 called Norb. I love the, uh, the uh, I don't know, the, Norb. the symmetry there, the Nook Norb. The alliteration. Yeah, the liter- yeah, yeah, it's great. Uh, so so that's where we are tonight. We, we're typically joined by our friend Sprackles, but he's off like doing other things. I can't imagine what could possibly more be more important than talking about uh, Lex episodes with us. But regardless, we'll, we'll muddle through without him. So Steve, uh, I, 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 as I was watching Nook and Norb, I, I had this thought that we typically open every episode with this sort of, sort of te- it's, it's becoming tedious at this point, this question where I ask, are you guys still into it? Are you still loving Lex? And as I watched Nook and as I watched Norb, I felt like I'm going to quit doing that on the episodes of The Lexorcist because... The show's great. It's going to have to prove to me that it's not great before I start asking this question about, are you still into it? Is it still good? Because I think at this point, I'm going to give Lex the credit. I'm going to assume that Lex is good until it shows me that it's not. How do you feel about that? I agree. I think uh, the show has to hit us with a real like stinker episode before yeah. that question is needed again. Because this is... The worst episodes of this show, we're, we're like 16 episodes in, including the first season, which is all movies. Mm-hmm. The worst episodes are just good rather than great. Yeah, yeah. This I mean, is a fantastic show. Like Every every episode has held up or been awesome. It, it's yeah. one of those. Yeah, all the, even the bad ones are good, so to speak. I don't know. Um, now, I will say... Thinking ahead to my memory, and sometimes my memory of things is not, you know, what is actually true when I go back and and pay close attention to it. But my memory of season three is that it gets a little rough. It gets a little hard. Um, they spend a lot of time in the same place, which is not true of season two or season one so far. They're always I, moving. They're always going somewhere new. So that's kind of why. I've seen, I've seen very little of season three, but I remember what what little of it I saw was like, budget issues yeah, it's like yeah. They're, they're really making the most of like the 25 cents that the sci-fi channel gave them yeah 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 so uh <laughs> so here we are uh, it's season two episode 11 nook uh steve you're you're the master of this we always go to you for this what it, what, what happens in this episode what's the plot line of nook uh so speaking of questions and things yeah, that yeah. we say repeatedly stop me if you heard this one <laughs> Dan and Zev are horny, and so they make <laughs> bad decisions. <laughs> like every episode, like that is that is how it begins. Uh, so the the crew of the Lex are uh, they they pick up a, a signal from a, a random planet, and Zev's like, "Hey, let's let's go down there. Let, maybe maybe we can get laid." And, and Stanley's like, "No, uh, this is a bad idea. We should not be doing this." Right. Uh, and and Zev is like, "Look." I want to go down there and I'll make you a deal. Um, if I don't get laid when I'm down there, well, when I when we get back to the Lex, I'll have sex with you. And Stanley's like, yeah, I'll twist my <laughs> arm. I, I'll, I'll take this bet. Uh, <clears throat> they go down to the planet, which they learn is Nook. And Nook is like an ocean planet. The entire yeah. planet is water except for this one little island. Yeah, I don't know how well this and, comes up through. Because like, what's funny about Lex also, I mean, not to interrupt, but... Uh, they have um, it, it came out in the pre high def era, you know, you, old, old aspect ratio. And so when you're looking online for like pictures of Lex screenshots from Lex, you know, you get what you get. The quality is what it is. But here's a here's a screenshot from from when they land on the planet. So, I mean, it, you know, you can see it's a little bit different from when being out in like the pitch black reaches of space. Yeah, it's so this it's it's one island on the on the entirety of this planet, and on yeah. this island is a society of just men. There are no women, and so mm-hmm. immediately Zev is like, "Hell yeah, jackpot!" <laughs> um, it, it's like this kind of like 
very like non technologically advanced yeah. society. Everyone is a farmer, uh, or the you know everyone has like a very like mundane task their entire life is dedicated to. And so uh Anne is, you know, upset because there's no women. Uh Kai is just kind of like he's as intrigued as the dead can be because uh he he wants to learn about this planet. And uh Zev is like, fuck yeah, orgy. Uh it's it, so uh <laughs> Uh, they, they each kind of go off and, and do their own thing. They each kind of, like... I guess not Zev. Zev, like, tries to get with everyone, but, like, Kai and, and Stanley both have, like, a main uh, nook resident that they, they kind yeah. of attach themselves to and follow around. But we learn, like, a lot about this planet and, like, it's this, like, mundane society it has. Like, I feel like we learn a lot more about nook than any other planet that we've mm -hmm. encountered so far in the series. But, um, yeah. like, it, it, it's all men. Uh, it, it's, there's no, very little technology. There's, like, a, the, the society is, like, separated into people that can read and people that can write. And no one's allowed to do both except for, like, this master librarian guy yeah. whose, whose name that I don't remember. And so he's got this, like, library full of, like, f forbidden knowledge. It it's it's there, and he feels, and the Nook Society feels obligated to maintain it, but they, they are not allowed to use it. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if you if you know how to read, uh, that's great. You never get to look at any of this literature. If you know how to write, and all you do all day is copy this the letters by hand to like create new volumes and fresher copies of all of this old literature but you don't know how to read so you have no idea what any of it means you were just copying letters visually yeah uh that that it's because it kind of goes nowhere like that's just like a thing that they, a little tidbit of the society that they give us mm -hmm. uh but ultimately there's this main library and kai kind of hangs out with him they they trade information uh, main uh, astro librarian guy like uh, takes an interest in Kai's proto blood, and Kai's like, yeah, here, have a little bit. It's not like it's not like I spent a whole season hunting for any of this. Takes he's, on this he's not stingy. He's sample. not stingy with the proto uh, blood. So he gives some proto blood to the guy. He's like, yeah, 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 examine it. I don't give a shit. <laughs> um, there's a is it brother Traeger? Traeger? Yeah. I don't know. There's a. There's a, a, a Nook resident that uh, kind of like attaches himself to Stanley, and it, it becomes very clear that uh, he's uh, interested in, in Stanley uh, sexually. And Stan's trying to be like, you know, sorry, you know, I, I, I'm i straight. And of course, he has no idea. The, the concept of being straight, like, makes no sense to him because it's just men. Like, even when Zev shows up, they're like, that's a strange man. Like, yeah, they don't understand yeah. the concept of, of gender or sex. Mm -hmm. uh, so Zev is just constantly trying to get laid like anyone anytime she gets a, like a nook resident alone or even when they're not alone you know she's she'll you know she's taking all comers if there's four or five of them in a group she'll go like uh there's a scene where she goes to uh she gets a massage and she starts like moaning loudly which triggers like a near orgy um but she's trying to she's trying to get laid and eventually someone tells her like, hey look uh like Tomorrow night or is like this. This uh, it's the longest night of the year. It's this like ritual, and basically there are no rules. Everyone dresses up like a low rent furry, and then we do whatever we want. We can have all the orgies we want. So Zev, just wait till tomorrow, and, and you'll you'll get laid as much as you want. So that's what Zev is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, Kai is off with the master librarian. Stanley is still getting hit on by uh by brother Traeger. I think is his name. I don't know. Uh, but in Stanley again is like, you know, sorry, not interested. And brother Traeger is like crushed. He's devastated. Yeah. Uh, but he tells Stan, you know, Hey, uh, if you change your mind, I'll be outside. And Stan thinks about it for a little while. And he's like, you know what? I'm not going to get any action for anywhere else. And so he's actually going to give, go give it a shot. And so yeah. he's going to, he yeah. goes out to, uh, to see brother Traeger. Turns out brother Traeger is dead. Uh, and so, uh, what happened to Brother Traeger? Well, the next morning, basically, uh, Master Librarian guy accuses Stanley of murder, and, and you know he wants to either kill the newcomers or exile all of them. Uh, and eventually, like they they talk him down. Like I don't even remember like how how does the crew even get out of this situation? Like yeah. eventually, it, Master Librarian's like you know kill them, they're murderers, and then that just stops. 
Uh, no, without without I guess without uh, sp- you know spoiling it as 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 we agree, uh, the show's great and you should be watching <laughs> along with us. But what this episode is great. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but at the end of it, since we're talking about the end, the the brothers on the planet, this like m- monastic community of men, they decide the. I guess the the lead brother d- makes the decision because he's in charge. He's the one that has the agency to make the decision. But he's like, yep, uh, our, our, we've been too disrupted. There's no coming back from this. I'm going to blow up the planet. And so he does. He he kills everybody. Yeah. And our, our friends on the – but what's interesting about it, there's so much to talk about with the episode. But he's not – he doesn't seem to feel particularly vindictive to – uh, Zev or Stanley or any of the people who brought this to them, these outsiders who came to their planet and ruined everything. Uh, he doesn't feel insistent, like, I got to take you guys with me for ruining everything. He's like, nope, uh, you guys can leave. You know, it's fine. He lets them get away. He's not particularly interested in catching them or stopping them or punishing them for what they've done. He's like, nope, we're just going to blow up the planet now. So he kills himself and everybody, all his brothers, blows up the planet. But he's not interested in making sure that he takes the Lex with them, which is kind of interesting to me. Like he's it's just Yeah, he's just like you know, his society has ended and he's upset about that yeah yeah but how do they what makes the master librarian like stop trying to to like kill stanley or try him for murder because like everyone eventually like turns on the master librarian and they like kind of like talks him down from the ledge right i don't, I, I don't remember how they have but ultimately like uh the stand is accused of murder and then mm-hmm. everyone just kind of moves on and has the furry yeah. party at the end yeah. of the night um they so they're that... good the, the one guy is get tregor uh, brother tregor who is interested in stan um uh fascinated by stan he uniquely his job was to be a copier but he uniquely also was able to read and he didn't share that with anybody like one way or another he learned to read and so he ha- he understands all the secrets of of the planet and where they all came from and all of that um and so he's he's like telling Stan like I don't care about the rules anymore I you know I know too much I uh let, let's do what we feel like doing I think that's what and so he's breaking out of this shell like the 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 one brother who has access to everything and knows where they came from and whatnot, um, he's like sort of in in charge of controlling the society and keeping it going along. And we find out that they can reproduce asexually when they because it's this society of only men. Um, so when they get old and die, they just bring another one out of the vat and keep the whole thing going. Um, but this one guy Trago represents someone who kind of like. Uh, broke the mold and is able to you know know things that he shouldn't do things that he shouldn't be able to do and maybe he's going to be a disruptive element and then the catalyst of the lex coming in sort of blows it all up which is funny because it's not even necessarily the woman that is zev that blows everything up although she's certainly very very disruptive but um it, it's even maybe Stan and Tregor's interest in Stan that blows everything up, which is kind of interesting in a society of all men. There, I, I think maybe I could get it uh, too far up my own ass and read way too much into this episode, but I think this is kind of a deep uh, piece here, like Nook. Like, there's a lot going on. There's a lot of really interesting ideas for like a fictional sci-fi universe here. There's a lot going on with this episode. And I think it's something that like I, I, I'm kind of now that now that you and I are talking, we're like, well, what happened at the end? Why did they let them go? I'm kind of interested in like dialing the episode back up and like rewatching <laughs> it to see to refresh myself on on what all happened. But yeah, yeah like, I feel like I understand why why they let them ultimately leave the planet. Yeah, the guy just didn't care. I'm just trying to remember why they dropped the whole Stanley murdered brother Tregor thing. And I don't remember that. I think, I think maybe just like the other, the rest of the society were kind of like, what do you, what, do you, what, what is murder? Like what yeah. is, what is a trial? Like they were so confused by the concept of one person killing another, that, that maybe yeah. the master librarian claims that we need to punish them just kind of fell on deaf ears. That was part um, of it. And the master guy was proposing that, Hey, we got to cancel the night of no rules. We, we got this situation going on with the murder and everything. And everyone else was like, dude, no, we're not canceling. <laughs> we are not canceling. Rules night. We are not canceling the night of no rules. Forget about it. And set, so he sort of lost the people at that point. Yeah. And so the Night of No Rules is where kind of like all of the different plot points come to a head. 
Um, Zev, like, has an orgy, so Zev, like, actually has sex for the first time as a woman. I think she turned into a man and had sex previously, which is a thing <laughs> that happens in this show. Oh, yeah. Uh, so she, she finally, uh, gets laid, so Stan is not gonna get any action when he gets back to the Lex. Uh, we find out what happened to Brother Tregor is the Master Librarian used his knowledge of Proto-Blood to knock Kai out somehow. Yeah. Uh, and then he stole uh, Kai's little little wrist like blade thingy and killed uh, uh and, and killed Brother Tregor in an attempt to frame the Lex crew yeah. and hopefully get rid of them. Uh, but ultimately he didn't work. Uh, there ultimately his plan didn't work, and so he's like, "Fuck it, I guess uh, our society has failed. We have to blow up the planet." And so he kind of like plot dumps what's going on. Uh, it turns out many many years ago. Uh, people from another planet landed on Nook and created this society. They created the island, built it from scratch, and then created the Society of All Men because in their society, basically all of the terrible things that had happened in the world, like all the war, all the violence, all the death, uh, it, uh, it came about because the men competing against other men to attract women. And so they, they created a society of all men and then Zev shows up and has sex with a bunch of the guys and master librarians like, nope, end of civilization. <laughs> uh, he triggers a bomb to destroy the entire planet. He Again, he lets the Lex crew live. He doesn't, he doesn't yeah. try to take them out. He's yeah. like, hey, this is happening. Like, You can stay if you want. You can leave if you want. I don't care. So the Lex crew just leaves. But the Lex crew, even though they are directly responsible for the destruction of the civilization, they make no effort whatsoever to be like, hey, Guys, two guys. Three, at least two or three of you can fit in the moth with us. Or maybe, yeah. you know, give us five minutes, we'll land the Lex, and you can get on here with us. But no, like, uh, they show up, Zev gets laid, they leave, planet explodes. Uh, the, the crew of the Lex has destroyed another civilization in the episode Nook. Yeah, I mean, there's not, it's, it's interesting to me, there's nothing super funny, because a lot of episodes of Lex, it's like, kind of like, oh, Stan, like, uh, tripped on a banana peel and blew up a planet, and it's kind of played for a laugh, but, like, this one, I don't think it has that type of jokey element to it. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a, a strange society, you mm -hmm. know, a, a male exclusive society with asexual reproduction, and there's, like, a basically like a furry party yeah. once a year and it's there's no laughs it's like the episode like plays it straight like yeah. this is not and this frank is just what this society is like <laughs> it's not meant to be there for your amusement they're doing their own thing and the lex are essentially like invaders that have disrupted their life and frankly it's kind of heartfelt right like when tregor and stan are having little moments it's like i mean it's it's emotionally resonant i mean i don't mean to overstate it but it is like you're like you feel for these people in the situation they're in and like stan's sort of in a weird place and tregor doesn't know anything other than the this planet that he's been on so like it, i i feel like the emotional stuff actually comes across in this episode yeah, it is like this is this is not an episode that is played for laughs mm -hmm. and you know occasionally the the series hits us with one an episode like that like yeah. the, the the trial of stan yeah like sometimes it drops is it keeps the goofiness but sometimes it yeah. treats goofiness uh like it's it's also it's got an element of like seriousness to it it's got some yeah. weight to it uh and it's just a testament to the show it can pull off all of those things. It can be goofy and funny. It can be goofy and play it straight. Or it can tell a serious story. Uh, show's great. Episode Nook is great. It is there. Yeah. There are some layers to this episode that you would not expect if you were just had like this this really high level familiarity with Lex. Right. Could expect of... it to just be like stupid sex jokes and yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Not there's more to it than that in this episode. Yeah, a couple other comments. I I recall and I don't. I don't I won't recall it specifically here, but I recall Kai having a few moments where he's just acting a little bit differently. Something about being in this situation or wh whether it's a failure of continuity in the writing or whatnot. But something about Kai in this episode, he has a couple moments where he's kind of like 
displaying a personality that's slightly different from from his usual like i'm dead the dead aren't interested in blah 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 he has like he's interested in like showing the the head librarian how his little scorpion works and stuff like that so there's a a couple kai moments in this episode that were slightly i won't call them out of character but it's almost like kai felt himself at ease and for some reason in this environment where he could uh portray himself a little bit so i I found that interesting and then also before like yeah, in the, in the TV Planet episode. Yeah, I yeah. sees a balloon, and he like he has like a yeah a, a moment where he's like, oh, I remember when I was alive, I used to yeah. enjoy balloons. It's like it's like for whatever reason, being in this library like triggered the, some of the the living Kai that somehow is still present within him. Yeah, and then the other uh, thing I was thinking about because like uh, we'll get into Norb next, uh, which is a little bit more of an arc, you know, larger continuity episode. But um, so I was watching Nook and I thought, wow, this episode's pretty good. This is a good episode of this TV show. But then uh, and then I thought, I wonder if I could like tell our friend Rachel or our friend Matt, uh, also creators on the channel, like, hey, you should watch this. This is a an example of a good episode from this show that I think is really interesting for a couple different reasons that you might you might enjoy. But then I also wondered, is part of the reason that I think this episode is interesting is because I've spent... 10 hours previous to this watching other episodes of these characters so i know who kai is and i know who stanley is and so i know all this stuff about these characters that informs why i find this situation interesting so is it actually true that i could could i actually say hey rachel you should watch episode nook of lex i think it's pretty interesting would she still get as much or even anything out of it as good as I think it might be without having all the background that we have of watching all this stuff. Do you think that would work or do you think they really need to come along for the long haul? I, I think they need to come along for the yeah. long haul. Cause I think one of the, one of the reasons we like this episode is because it is outside the norm. Right. But I think if, if, if they, if they start with this episode, they might be a little shocked when they, you know, watch the TV planet episode mm-hmm. or uh, the, 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 the sex spaceship episode there's got to be at least four of those yeah uh i I think they got to be along for the whole ride yeah i agree i kind of agree with you and the other thing that i the other reason i was having that thought is that there's this uh, cartoon show and i have to bleed over here but there's this cartoon show called the bad batch which is a star wars tv show that uh, matt and i and and rachel really really like and we've told steve like hey we think you know you're a fan of certain types of uh, animated programs um, hey, you should watch this. It's really great. And Matt has said in the past, like, uh, you know, I could curate a list for you. I could pick out, you know, two episodes here, you know, one or two episodes here of a curated list that would be really great. And then you could get a get a taste of what this is all about. And then I was stepping back from that and I was thinking, well, even the episodes that are bad, like a just a, a bad episode, there'll be a couple moments in that episode that tell you about where the characters are coming from or what they're all about or you have even even like the worst episode there might be one little like five second character moment in it that really colors and fills in uh a lot of 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 what something's all about and so i almost was stepping back from myself and thinking maybe it's not always great to give someone a curated list maybe they're going to miss certain things that make the whole thing so much richer so i don't know like i and I know I cannot tell someone, hey, you need to watch Lex. It's like, here's 40 hours worth of this TV show. It's really great. That's super daunting. So I, I'm just thinking about like, because for a long time, I was one of these people who was thinking like, yeah, you just need some curation. Uh, you need someone to come and tell you which episodes of this long running TV show are really key and really special. And then you can get get a hold of it. But I think like now I'm kind of Nook made me think this like maybe maybe a uh, when the special episodes come along part of why they're special is because you have all this background and maybe the background some of those episodes were lesser works and we'd agree that they're not as good but they do fill in some blanks that make something like nook the more special when it comes along so i don't, I don't know I'm, I'm just thinking about like my curated list idea maybe it's maybe there's some holes in that i don't know because there's there's so many like for lack of a better phrase, like Monster of the Week episodes yeah, of Lex. Like, yeah, there's yeah, so yeah. many one-off episodes. Mm-hmm. And so that, that makes me think that you could do a curated list. Then what episodes would I 
be comfortable telling someone to skip. Right. Like, none of that comes to mind. I feel like they all collectively make a hole that you need. Yeah. Uh, yeah I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I guess Matt and Rachel are just gonna have to start from the beginning. Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll watch it all over again. I'll watch it for like the third or fourth time <laughs> with those guys when they come around. So that that was Nook. Um, any any final thoughts on Nook? I think it's a really kind of a standout I, episode. I think it's pretty cool. A fantastic episode. Okay. It's just you know, we, we, like this this season has been great. We got seven ninety one, which is like at the heights of just like the weirdness that that Lex is known for. Yeah, and now we've got nook which is like a more like serious laird uh episode set in the same universe yeah. it's just you know hey lex is just coming at you from all sides <laughs> it's great so that brings us to uh season two episode 12 called norb which again I, I i i know it's just surely a coincidence but i love that it's nook and then norb i just like that uh, so <laughs> this one also i you know spoiler alert i like it i think it's great uh, what happens in Norb? This is like we're we're bringing back some continuity type stuff, some stuff from previous episodes. This is Norb actually like moves the plot along, yeah, in, in a way yeah, that, yeah, yeah. that we have not seen in a long time. Yeah. Uh, so uh, several episodes ago, it was uh, the episode with the hillbillies. They right. go to hillbilly planet. And there's a kid named Norb who is building a spaceship to try to escape hillbilly planet. Is that correct? I think yes. that's what happened. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, like, the, the the crew, like, helps him build his spaceship, and he flies into outer space. Um, flash forward, I don't know, five or six episodes, and uh, Norb, is conti- Norb is continuing to fly around space in his spaceship, and he sees, like, the space equivalent of, like, gingerbread house. Yeah. The gingerbread house that, like, you know, like, Hansel and Gretel would, like, get trapped <laughs> inside. Uh, and so he pulls up to this like gingerbread like candy cane house, and then it it like it was a trap. It disassembles itself into a like a shitload of mantrid drones, like the uh-huh. the arm with the the arm with an an, an orb up on its shoulder, and that that's you know, it's so like somehow when you get like a million of them together, they can like project. I don't know like camouflage or a hologram or something but regardless it was a trap and so norb like flies away he's calling for help he has to eject from his uh his spaceship i think it's called the charger and he's like hey you know uh you know help this is norb you know i'm under attack please someone come and save me and the lex just happened to be nearby and they they go and get him and they they're excited like hey norb how's it going like they're like it's it's been a while since they've they've you know had a recurring character that, 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 that's friendly towards them. Um, and right away, like, Norb is off. Like, he was yeah. this kind of, like, yeah. cheerful, smart kid in the previous episode, and he is just super, like, deadpan and quiet. And, like, everyone recognizes there's something wrong with him, but they, you know, he's a kid. They feel, you know, he's traumatized. He just got attacked by something. They don't think much of it. Uh, he's also carrying around, like, an orb. And uh, he's like, there, there's a picture of my dad in this orb. And Kai is like, there's no picture. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no one knows what to make of this. Because clearly this orb is important to Norb. And he says, you know, it's a picture of my dad. And everyone's like, yeah, no, sorry, bro. There, there's nothing there. Um, so ultimately, they're trying to figure out what to do with Norb. Uh, and so they just like get him to a room and, and let him, uh, you know, get some sleep. And then the crew of the Lex will figure out what to do. You know, maybe they'll find him a home. Maybe he's going to live on the Lex. You know, they don't know. Uh, so Norb is hanging out in his room and then he rips his arm off, which is uh, a little strange. And then he attaches the arm that he just ripped off to the orb. And that creates a mantid mantra drone. Yeah. Uh, and then he regrows uh, like a gnarly, like gross looking arm. And, uh, and then, you know, the crew go and find him and they're like, you know, or what the hell, like what happened to your arm? And Norb also explodes into like five or six mantra yeah. drones. It's awesome. Uh, so pre- presumably like Norb, this little kid character was just ripped apart by yeah. mantra, mantra drones off screen. So I don't think he comes back. No, so I think he, I don't think so. Dead. Yeah. So, so Norb is dead. Uh, yeah. Thanks for, thanks for coming. So now, now mantra drones are all over the ship. Um, at first, at first, I, I think I, I've got the order of events wrong. At first, they think there's only one mantra drone, mm. and then they they learn that there's multiple. 
Uh, but but Kai Kai and Zev are trying to find a way to like destroy the Mantra drones. Uh, Seven ninety gets like his is a chunk of brain pulled out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so Seven ninety has been killed, and uh, Kai and Zev are trying to like bring him back. You know, like Kai puts like some of his proto blood on the little brain chunk uh, because they they assume that you know we. We need a machine to stop a machine. So 790, being a robot, will know how uh, he'll know a way to stop these mantra drones. So the mantra drones are just taking over the ship. They are they're they are like basically ripping the Lex apart and using parts of the Lex to create new mantra drones. So they are like growing exponentially, mm-hmm. and the Lex is dying. Like the Lex is telling Stan, like I don't feel good. Uh, I'm sick. You know, I, I I'm hurting. You know, things are bad. The Mantra drones are winning. Yeah. Uh, and so eventually, like, there's just thousands of Mantra drones running around the Lex. The crew has to abandon ship. They have to uh, get into a, a moth and fly out until they have a plan. Uh, and, and that plan, they've, they've gotten 790 back. And uh, because uh, because this is a sci-fi show, the plan, of course, is to reverse the polarity. Because that, <laughs> that fixes everything in a sci-fi show. They saw show. it on an episode of Star Trek once. So like, yeah, yeah uh, basically, like, their idea is like an EMP. Like, you know, they're going to do this, this pulse that will just kill everything electronic on the ship. Uh, they assume that the Lex will survive. 790 won't. And Stan's like, yeah, fuck it, we don't care. Yeah. But, you know, of course, Not like, good. Ty, Ty, Ty and Zev go and rescue 790. Uh, they successfully reverse the polarity, which kills all the Mantra drones, and they think that, you know, that was it. Uh, you know, we're, we're good here. And then suddenly, they're back on, like, the bridge of the Lex, uh, and Mantrid comes up on screen. Mm-hmm. And, like, they're shocked, because they thought Mantrid was, dr- was was dead. Right. And so, um, Mantrid kind of like he monologues and explains his whole plan. He says, you know, basically, you know, I went back when I I almost died. Uh, I I was, my, my human parts were merged with the insect parts and machines. I am part human, part insect, part machine. And the, the insect part of me wants to kill all humans. And so I'm going to go on this, you know, a path of annihilation across the universe to kill all human beings, a uh, crew of the Lex, uh, because you are responsible for my resurrection. Your reward is I'm going to save you for last. And mm-hmm. so, and, and Mantrid refers to all of this as a game. He's basically telling them, like, I could have killed you anytime I wanted to. Uh, basically, Norb was just fucking with you. <laughs> right. And so, Mantrid's like, you know, ha ha ha, I'm going to destroy the universe. I'm out. And the crew of the Lex are just left there wondering, like, what the hell do we do? And the plot has now been moved forward. The crew of the Lex is now fully aware that Mantrid is out there getting ready to destroy the universe. Yeah, yeah. I, I love this one. He he uh and Mantrid when he when he finally does appear, he he looks kinda like I don't know if I can find a picture or not. He looks kinda like lawnmower manny. He's like uh Yeah, he's just a floating head on yeah, screen. Yeah, he's just like uh he's not embodied necessarily. He's he's some sort of collective consciousness in all these arms and stuff. So like I love that um a, I love there that they went there with Norb. Like, here's this plucky kid who just a couple episodes ago, he was this heroic figure who found his way out of this tough situation and flew his rocket ship away. And like, good for Norb, he's going to make his own way. No, he just gets eaten by Mantra drones. Mantra doesn't care. The, un- the universe of Lex does not care. If you're a cute kid, you're going to get turned into robot arms. It-, it is what it is. So I love that. And then also, I love that uh, <laughs> when the uh, the Lex here we get like the Lex is a character in and in and of itself, right? It, hi, Stan. Yep. Sure, Stan. Whatever you say, Stan. But in this episode, um, the Lex kind of has some acting to do, right? Like, Stan, I don't feel good. Things are getting bad for me, Stan. He's like he has a little bit more uh, to do in this episode, and I, I had to double check the the voice actor for the Lex is a, a guy named Tom Glant. And I think in this particular episode, he does a great job. Like, it's kind of cool to see, like, uh, Lex having a tough time. And how is he going to figure his way out of this one? So it was kind of cool to see the Lex be a character a little bit more than than usual. Lex is like a living flesh and blood thing. Yeah. And it's suffering an injury and it's, it's, it's it's in pain. 
it's being hurt by Mantrid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, it it was pretty cool. I was I was really interested in this episode and like um, you're used to the the Norb and and the the arms and stuff, but like you, you forget like we'd get this little trailer at the end of some episodes where the arms are like oh the arms are still there in the distance and you're kind of like oh yeah that that's a lingering thing, but but here to like to just have it brought back into focus like no Mantra's going to eat everybody. He's going to eat you. And matter of fact, he's going to eat the whole entire universe. There's not going to be any. Because what he's driving at is he's just going to consume everything. And there's not going to be anything left in the universe, only banter drones floating around in a black void. And so to just to have that refocus after you spend some time doing these other Monster of the Week things, it's like, I don't know, it was, it was uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm scared of Mantrid. I forgot I forgot for a minute, but now I remind it I'm supposed to be scared of Mantrid. It was, it was good. And the show did that on purpose because we, like, early on, like, you know, we're, this is like episode 12 of season two, you know, mm-hmm. Mantrid's in the first episode and like the first four or five episodes, wherever the Lex went, you know, at the end of the episode, it was like, it was almost like a stinger, like the Mantrid drones yeah, would, like, yeah. would come and get them. And then it stopped and we noticed that, like, it's been a while since we've seen the right, Mantrid drones. Right. It's like the show kind of like purposely let you forget about Mantrid. Yeah. And then suddenly it's like, oh, we killed the kid and now we're eating the Lex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it's cool, uh, and it feels like to me, and I, I guess I know where it's going because I've seen it before. But like, it feels like they're escalating. It feels like okay, yeah, I should be worried because things are things are getting more intense here. Things are escalating, and so they're doing a good job with that, with the 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 larger lore arc in addition here. So it it was well placed. It was it was about it was about time for us to check in with Mantrid. Yeah, I I, I like this one a lot. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, Mantrid is awesome. Like I love the character of Mantrid. Like <laughs> they, they chose I, a great, so great cool. actor for it. Yeah, you know, he's I mean, so great. Yeah, yeah. Um, yep. I like it a lot, but I, Nook left an impression. I even though this is like a plot heavy episode, it, it moves the plot forward. It's like a lore episode or mm-hmm. a myth arc episode. Uh, I think I like Nook better than this one, even though they're yeah. both really, really good. I, I think I, I'm pro Nook. Uh, not that Norb is bad. No, yeah, I absolutely absolutely agree with that. Like, if I was comparing the two of these, like, Nook is a, a better piece of, like, art. It's, like, just there, there's more to think about. There's more to chew on. There's a little more going on. And then Mantrid is just, like, you know, I'm interested in where this sci-fi story is going, and this is part of moving it forward. So that's that's good in that way. But, yeah, as, as far as just, like, a piece of contemplative art, I'll go ahead and use call it art, Lex's art, uh, Nook is the superior episode of these two. Not to say that either one of them is bad, but yeah, I I agree with you for sure. All right, two two more winners. Two more uh, winners. Lex continues to impress. <laughs> o- only we're, bangers. We're, uh, Sixteen episodes in, and every one of them have been good to great. Are now, we I'm not gonna, expecting that to change anytime soon? Are we? Here's the thing. Here's a question. I'll wrap it up with this one. Uh, I've been watching Star Wars and it's controversial and stuff. There's there's this like controversy about like even if something came along and it was bad, would you be willing to that you're a fan of? Would you be willing to get over yourself and admit that something was bad, even if it's something that you you love? And I, I'm wondering like when the bad episode of Lex comes along, am I going to like lie to myself and be like, no, it's good, even though it's bad? I'm gonna like lie to myself and say that it's really great. What, what do you think? I'll call it out. Like I am, okay, okay. There is no okay franchise, no thing that I love so much. That okay, I will accept bad product from it. And Very like, good. Com- completely sidebar conversation from their time, but like specifically talking about Star Wars. Uh-huh. Like I, every time a new Star Wars show comes out, uh, you know, like reviews are mixed, and so I'll go yeah. to like the Star Wars Reddit and see what people are saying. There are so many people that say like you know. Star Wars is like pizza. Even when it's bad pizza, <laughs> you're still getting pizza. Uh, I've seen people say that, like, I'm just happy that they continue to to make Star Wars. And it's like, there's no franchise that I love so much that my bar for happiness with it is it continues to exist. Yeah, okay. And so okay. if Lex gets bad, I will say that Lex has become bad. Yeah, it's 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 100% intellectual honesty here on the Lexorcist. So this has been uh, the Lexorcist uh, episode, I think, 10, where we're into uh, season two episodes 
11 and 12. 11 and 12. 11 and 12. So you got to keep all these numbers straight. But we thank you for joining us. We encourage you to check out the the TV show, The Lex. It's available on a variety of streaming platforms. All free on YouTube. Yeah, it's on YouTube. You can you can find it easily enough. It's a cool show. Gosh darn it. So join us and uh, stay tuned for next episode. It stands to reason that it's going to be great. Say goodnight, Steve. Good night.